What's up everybody? I definitely didn't have to record this video twice because I was muted the entire first time I was doing it. But you know what we're here for. We are here to talk about the young guns and how they will do after this updated Banzuke coming into Haru 2022. Who do you guys think are going to be the winners? Who do you think is going to stand out? And who do you think is going to be promoted to that next division? Please let me know as we get through this video. So some of you might be wondering, what is a young gun or a rising star in my definition? Well, if you go to the document in the description down below, it is a sheet, Google sheet, that uh, shows a list of names that, of guys who I think are going to be the stars of the future. And uh, these requirements to be on said list are pretty variable. It depends on your age, if you went to college or not, your starting rank, your current trajectory. And right now you'll see a lot of guys highlighted in yellow that I'm putting on probation to, uh, you know, if they keep underperforming, I'm probably going to take them off because I don't think they have much potential for the future. It's a very, I don't remember if the word is subjective or objective. It's a very subjective list that, uh, applies to a lot of what I think will contribute to those people to actually look out for. And we might see become very big stars in the future. And to those that succeed, I will claim that I discovered them first and that I am an amazing scout and uh, to the 90% of others that never make it past the third division. Who are they again? So we can't start without talking about Atami Fuji. It was no surprise that at four and three from Makushita one, he would be a shoe in for promotion and he definitely deserves it. He is a very skilled sumo wrestler and I can't wait to see what color belt he chose. It's also worth mentioning Shimazu Umi, the 25-year-old from Hanera Goma Bea, is also a Sekitori debutant, and I'm pretty sure I pronounced the stable wrong, but ignore that as well. I can't help it. <laughs> as for the rest of the Banzuke, we are following 64 other Rikshi, and 26 of them are sitting at new career highs. And that doesn't mean that 40-something of them were losers, but that... A third of them are at new career highs, another good percentage of them did indeed move up but have yet to re-reach their peak, and then a very small percentage did indeed have losing records. So let's dive into that third division and keep swimming down until we reach the bottom of the Banzuke. The highlights of the Makushita division all sit within the top 15 ranks, where we have an incredible 8 young men competing for the chance at Judo. Kano, the 23-year-old from Chuo University, coming off of a 6-1 from Makushita 9, finds himself at Makushita 2 East. And I knew it was going to be a long shot for him to get promoted, but I was really hoping for that. 23-year-old <laughs> Nishikawa's Yusho over Ryuden puts him at Makushita 3 East. 21-year-old Dewa Noryu at Makushita 3 West sits across from him, and 24-year-old Oshoma sits right below at Makushita 4 West. 24-year-old Fukai sits a half a rank below at Makushita 5 East, and 21-year-old Hokuseho, who has already touched Judo once, and, uh, well, it was for a very brief day, sits across from him at Makushita 5 West with Fuji Seiyun, the 24-year-old, sitting at Makushita 8 West. All of these guys fall within the top 10 ranks, while 23-year-old Osanai, with his Yusho playoff loss from Sandamne 19, will sit at Makushita 14, and we'll get to his playoff opponents in just a little bit. This is the range where a lot of these guys, if they were to get that 7-0 you show, they are guaranteed a spot in that top division. Whereas for someone like Kano, I say he probably gets it with a 5-2. Very, very unlikely if he gets a 4-3, but I'm really rooting for him. Same position for uh, Nishikawa and Dewa Noryu. Possibly make it with a 5-2. Definitely might not with a 4-3, and three. and then it even gets worse for Oshoma, Fukai, and Hokuseho, who would most likely need a 6-1 and one if they really wanted to squeak back into Judio. But we will see coming into the next tournament. Following these guys, we have a 23-year-old Fuji Toshi at Makushita 19, 24-year-old Keen Bozan at Makushita 34, 24-year-old Naya with a new career high of Makushita 40, 25-year-old Arauma at Makushita, 44. 
19-year-old Moji at Makushita, 54. And another big boy across from him, 19-year-old Mukai Nakano at Makushita, 54 East. And that is the man who defeated Olsa Nai for that Sandamne Yusho. Mukai Nakano is a really big boy, and I want to highlight him really quick because he stands at 180 centimeters tall, 171 kilograms large from Miyagino Stable. And again, at only 19 years old, with an s- impressive and consistent style, he is probably the guy to look out for in this third division. Coming into Sam Damne, a lot of men are falling back down into it or are falling further into it. This was a pretty big royal for uh, that fourth division. But here we're going to be taking the time to highlight the guys who really... Here we're going to be taking the time to look out for those guys who are sitting at new career highs. These include 24-year-old Suguro at Sandamne 10 West, who began his journey as a Sandamne 100 Tsukedashi alongside Keen Bolzan, who is sitting in the middle of that third division. We also have 23-year-old Miyagi, who is slowly making his way up at Sandamne 25, with 19-year-old Kyoda at Sandamne 26 right behind him. 19-year-old Kiryuko sits at Sandamne 29 after a fourth consecutive Kachikoshi since debut, with 20-year-old Nobehara sitting at Sandamne 40 with the same statistic. 18-year-old Tatsugushi sits at uh, Sandamne 56 with his fifth consecutive Kachikoshi. And 24-year-old Raiho makes his Sandamne debut at Sandamne 73, which rounds out all of those guys who have positive momentum. And I want to take the chance to highlight both Kiryuko and Miyagi in this division because I think that uh, despite the fact that they are a little more wild with their style, they're the most exciting prospects so far, I think. I'm very looking forward to seeing how Miyagi will do at the top of the division. Going back down into Jonidan, here we have almost as many out for injury or COVID as we did men who actually demoted due to losing. But overall, many are still on their slow climb up. 17-year-old Ieshima occupies the Jonidan 1 spot after recovering with a 4-3 and three record after two Makekoshi in a row. He's still young, still moldable. I'm not too worried for him. Career highs include 16-year-old Mizuno at Jonidan 5 and 19-year-old Asakiryu at Jonidan 9. 19-year-old Go Seiryu at Jonidan 11. 16-year-old Kiyonohana at Jonidan 17. 16-year-old Mogami Zakura at Jonidan 23, 19-year-old Abe at Jonidan 25, and 19-year-old Ito at Jonidan 60. I think these 16-year-old kids, Kiyonohana and Mogami Zakura, they are going to have a rough time of it because they're still learning, their bodies are still developing, but if they can catch some fire... Those guys are going to be the ones to look out for hitting Sandamne when they're 17, hitting Makushita when they're 17, 18. That's going to be some fire. And although they are a few ways away or a few tournaments away from that kind of prospect, I do believe that these are the ones that are going to be the ones to look out for here in Johnny Don. So look forward to seeing them. Unfortunately, I don't have any news about new Sukedashi Rikshi for March because they aren't listed on the Banzuke from the Sumo database or or the official Sumo website, but we do have some information about them. Uh, we have Kanzaki Taiga from Kinki University who's joining Takekuma Bea and Hatsuyama Sho from Toyo University to join Tamanooi Bea. Additionally, in March, uh, there is no Maizumo. So there will be uh, no new guys doing their placement matches in Harubasho. In Shibarayama's announcement, he mentioned that it is graduation season, and I assume he doesn't want to expose these future rikshi to COVID at these high schools and then have them bring it back to the stable where there's danger for another COVID outbreak among the sumo wrestlers. And honestly, I think that's fine. I don't think uh, too much is going to be lost from losing out on those Maizumo. They're just going to be all placed at the very bottom of a uh, Jonokuchi, which it's not hard to get out of Jonokuchi unless your name is Shonan Zakura. But that is uh, how it's going to fall for the March tournament, and they will instead be entered into the Natsubasho in May. So 
I know I missed a couple of the guys that slid down the Bonzuke, and I know I missed a couple of the guys that uh, did indeed go up. Some notable examples being Shishi, who is back to Makushita 17, and Ishizaki, who has fallen all the way down to Makushita 51. And, uh, well, the reason why I didn't cover them is because I simply did not have enough time. I didn't want the video to run for too long because I don't want to sit here listing everybody out. And uh, it seems, in my recording at least, we've already hit the 10-minute mark, which is going to be shorter in the final video. But... I did want to have some time to let you all know about what is happening at the upcoming tournament on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Leo Dickinson VT, which you can find in the description down below or right here below me on the screen. We will be hosting a raffle on my channel and the raffle prizes are going to be as follows. Third place, you get a set of my personal stickers as well as the Bonzuke for the previous tournament, January, the Hatsubasho. Second prize gets all of those, plus a fan towel of Mitake Yumi, and first place gets all of that, plus a Mitake Yumi Tegata. So, the way you enter is by coming to my stream and using a channel point redeem, which uh, is not too difficult. If you come, you can ask the question, how do I do it? And for every single day that you show up to the stream, you can redeem a raffle ticket, and that will give you one entry. Gifting subs as well as donating money and bits will also get you more entries. So, good luck to everybody who wants to try to win some of this awesome merch. And you can see these fan towels are huge. That Like, that's an entire bookcase back there. Like, you, you think, like, oh, it's a towel. You know, maybe the TV is making them look bigger. The people are smaller because they're Japanese. But no, these, these towels are big. They're nice, too. So... That is it for this video. I want to thank you all for watching. And if you think I missed anybody, then please let me know down in the comments below. If you think there's anyone who uh, came up from Jono Kuchi who you think I should be looking out for, let me know about them too. And if you think there are any other younger guys that uh, might meet my requirements, then be sure to give me uh, some of their information and I might put them on the list. Which my list you can find down in the description below. It's an entire spreadsheet that covers who these guys are, it gives links to their sumo db pages so you can get a better look at their careers thus far and it shows you uh, uh shows you the guys that i have currently on probation because i do want to only cover the rising stars not the guys who are going to fum for around in the 3rd and 4th division until they maybe make a debut in their late 20s and then not really do anything because we're trying to look for the next big stars we're looking for future Ozeki we're looking for future Yokozuna down here and even though it's incredibly unlikely we will find one I think it's exciting to try to take a look at the stars of the future because these are the guys that are going to be carrying sumo 5, 10, maybe even 15 years from now should they have long and prosperous careers. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to catch the sumo streams live on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash VT, where I will be hosting a day zero this Friday, the day before the tournament. It'll be starting... Uh, It'll be starting Central Standard Time, 10 p.m. or 1 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, or if you live in Europe, 4 a.m. UTC. We will be covering who I am going to be choosing for the Kachi Clash. We're going to be covering more details about the raffle that I mentioned earlier, and we're going to be predicting who is going to win this tournament. So be sure to tune in at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, the day before the tournament starts, and we will have another fantastic 15 days live coverage every single night. Hope to see you guys there.